set aside five hours for this podcast. <laughs> Hope it's okay. We could fill it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions for you, sir. <laughs> you can go first. Great. This is my show. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> That's really nice of you. Wow. It's a little too comfortable <laughs> as a co-host. He's leaving anyhow. Yeah. He's, what is he? He's like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it. Cut all my parts Short out. timers. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Jeez. <laughs> Mr. Josh Armstrong, welcome. It's not doctor, right? It is not doctor. Okay. All right. You never know. <laughs> I never know. Actually, I do have a doctorate in zoology from, um, and it's. It, I'm serious. It's in. It's in the 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 thing that my college degree is in, and it's a doctorate of zoology from Playhouse Play School, and it has all these cute little animals. It's it's really sweet. <laughs> okay, so Doctor Armstrong. <laughs> Well, welcome to the show. Um, so you're the director of the Downtown Alliance. This is true. Yeah. Um, okay. These are not fake, fake news. No fake news yet. Well, there's yeah. Trump right there for it. Um, how long have you been the director? I, I've been there about uh, a little over three years. It was three years in May. And, and um, oh, I'm sure well. your next question is, you know, what, what do you do and all that? Is that, is that where we're headed? Maybe. That might be on there. So, yeah, what is the <laughs> we um we had gone through a long period where our downtown had no organization that was kind of managing anything there, mm-hmm. and uh, at the chamber, our new director came in about a year and a half before I did, um, and came from Bloomington, where there's a very active downtown program, right. And these things, they can't manage themselves. They they just can't. Hmm. So while we were seeing some successes in our downtown, there was no guided vision that that entities were working towards. And there was no organization that kept other people on the, that vision. And there was no professional cheerleader for it. And there was no wrangler of um, projects and money. All those things were just kind of done piecemeal. So we were really lucky that we had some major investment in our downtown hmm. uh, with the Ford Center. And not lucky, but it, it wasn't part yeah. of a plan. Right, right. The Ford Center, the medical school, those things just sort of happened. The housing that happened downtown was one developer recognizing a need and going in there. There wasn't any... Um, counts on what was really needed. So getting someone in there, whether it was me or someone else, was critical to getting um, to working with the city to get a new downtown master plan done. Mm -hmm. And from the downtown master plan, my marching orders are now set up for the next five to seven years. Okay. And that's kind of what I do. Now, I work for the chamber, so I work from the corporate side or the business side on the equation um, but pretty much everything that happens in a downtown is a, people call it 3P or public-private partnership. Um, for example, the, everything from the, um, the hotel and the funds that went into that right. from the city. But look at something uh, smaller like um, C.H. Robinson moving their regional headquarters in, on Domain and 3rd. Yeah. Uh, and what was the city's role in that? Not a large enough project where the city could justify, you know, a huge expense. You know, I was able to get in there, determine that in order to close the deal, we needed to help them with some parking Mm -hmm. and determine the cost of that and really what their needs were and structure a parking enhancement uh, for them. If if something's happening in Evansville, there has to be parking involved, right? Well, it does when you're there all day. (laughs) And and I, I... I understand, I, and I appreciate the passion of people who, you know, we don't need it, we don't need it. No, you do. Mm-hmm. If if an entity that has thirty three employees, yeah, if you're working there, you don't want to go up to. You don't want to be moving your car every two hours. Yep. The the spots on the street are for consumers, not mm-hmm. workers. Right. And so, yeah, we have to deal with it, and we have to deal with how do we maximize those garages, which are big public investments. Yeah. And they're mm-hmm. designed to increase 
people down there and to increase property value down there. So that was, that's an example of, yeah. uh, and, and I get the parking thing. I know. No, it's uh, I know. It's a I hot know. topic, right? It, it is a hot topic. And, and we're, <laughs> we're in the midst of a parking study downtown, mm-hmm. yeah. um, working with uh, Kim Lee Horn, who's a, a very um, uh, well-regarded um, parking consultancy. Uh, we're working with one associate from their Tucson office cool. and one from Chicago. Um, because there are some announcements coming that require parking. You know, a 100,000 square foot building mm-hmm. needs a parking solution. Mm-hmm. A bar may not. And th- there is a difference. You know, a, yeah. a, okay. a, a $45 million investment <laughs> needs parking. Yeah. A yeah. million dollars may not. Okay. So, <laughs> right. And, and that's kind of what why we have a parking consultant that we're right, working right. with. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, to backtrack and part of why Clark is here. Uh, is uh, you didn't start out. I mean, this isn't why you're you were here. I guess you, before you took on, is it, was it right before you did the uh, you took on the downtown alliance position that you had a restaurant. It was a couple of years a couple before, years before that. Okay, yeah. the time my timeline is not. I'm not wasn't quite sure when yeah. when that happened. But you you had owned a, a restaurant here in town. I own two restaurants in two town. restaurants. Um, my background. Uh, We'll run in. We'll we'll go. We'll, hey. we'll cover that real briefly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, born and raised in Pasadena, California. A graduate of UCLA, and when I was uh, going to college, I was working in restaurants. Um, I graduated from college with a degree in political science, and by the time I graduated, I realized that I wanted to work in. Uh, in I, I didn't want to go to graduate school, hmm. and so I went to work for a design firm. Um, and we did um, entertainment executive offices was our specialty. Uh, you know, it was a land of, you know, $45,000 desks and it was just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was it was really uh, it was a great first job, you know, in terms of realizing that isn't what I wanted to do the rest nice. of my life. That's good to find and, out. And I uh, spent a year there and went back to a restaurant that I had been working in previously and just started tending bar and getting into the food and and then i started managing that restaurant uh went to uh, which was in downtown los angeles and uh went to a a local um what at the time was a local restaurant group eventually which was the cheesecake factory uh i was a managing partner at cheesecake factory restaurants Mm -hmm. from the time that we had 18 restaurants almost all in southern california till we had 110 restaurants and um, saw this company grow from you know 150 million dollars a year in sales to breaking a billion, and to okay. see this kind of thing, um, and to be a part of this thing that went from really where the founder knew who was working for him mm-hmm. to this at this point now multinational organization right, yeah. where the founder knew maybe works with the same hundred people every day that he happens to see at the corporate office or that he knows that he could call and, you know, like he used to do, Hey Josh, what's going on with this? Mm -hmm. Um, so after that, I, I reached a point there where contractually I was freed. Um, I was able to, to sell, um, my, my interest in that company. And I had decided I was going to retire and this was in 2005. Um, I was uh, 41. And hmm. um, retiring at 40, 40 is, <laughs> that's how this, it's, that would have it, been really good. It was incredibly <laughs> boring. It was, it it, 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 I, after like six months, I was like, I've got to do something. <laughs> and so I decided I was going to um, open a restaurant. And and that's what I did. And it was called Firefly Southern Grill. Um, how do you get from? There's guy. I think we're stepping over something. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're. How do you get to Evansville from? Oh, uh, my partner's from here, oh, and okay. we were really um, just very fatigued yeah. on on Los Angeles. You know, it was a place where two high income people making great money. All you do is work. I mm. mean, literally, your entire life is work mm. and traffic, and we would. I, we lived in this um, a really lovely high rise. We had a great home. 
um, nice cars. The only time we really saw each other was like after 10 p.m. or on vacations. Um, you know, we would we would call each other as we were both driving home around nine o'clock at night. It would sometimes take an hour, even at that time, to yeah. go 20 miles. Um, and we lived across the street from this steakhouse, and we used to like call our orders in at like 9:45, and not even like go into our house, just like pull up and and valet at the steakhouse, yeah, eat to get something to eat, and then you go home and crash, and then you get up at six in the morning and repeat, and it was um again it it was it was a life that was really beautiful on the outside you know lovely home overlooking sure. the ocean all this stuff you also end up where y- you just have all these people working for you because like you know i had to have someone come and feed the cat oh, i mean like like my life was just like right. all about work and so that's kind of we decided no we needed something different now my life now is all about work part of it is realizing you know for me as a person i'm a worker yeah it's important to me. I, looking back, I, I probably should have um, sought some guidance in how one makes a major change mm. like that. And is it really what I needed to do? Or, or could there have been some other way right. of handling it? Um, but at the end of the day, Jason, I love my life, man. Yeah. It's really, really, really <laughs> Traffic's sweet. Traffic's got to be way better <laughs> right now. <laughs> and parking, too. Oh, man, it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, and you're Mr. Downtown, so you know. Uh, I, I I find that I, you know, I have a, of course, kind of a, a boss. I'm doing the air quotes, yeah, yeah. Um, but also I have an. I, it's I just I don't necessarily think that I work for um, a funder or for an employer. I also have an entity or an idea that I work for. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the, the idea of the importance of downtown Evansville and the importance of urban neighborhoods and the importance of that connectivity that you get that you don't find very often when you're in a suburban place yeah. or a less urbanized place where I'm going to walk down the street and I'm going to run into one person every block that I know. It, yeah. And like most days, that's a really powerful affirming thing. Like there are days when it's like, oh, like gosh, I'm, like, I'm going to go around the other way. <laughs> exactly. I don't. I really don't want to talk to that person, or right. I know I'm going to run into her. Right. But for the most part, you know, I, I th- that that idea of how humans are um, live at a higher level, physically, emotionally, spiritually, environmentally, um, financially all those pieces of your life, how they're positively impacted by being in an urban place versus in a sprawling place. Yeah. And um, now there's a point where that urbanization can become a burden also. But So yeah. I think that I work for that too. I work for this idea how this collection of buildings can create jobs and opportunities for people, how it can create relationships and connections for people. That's that, I work for that. Man. entity as much as I work for a person. Right, yeah. And wow. I think it's funny that you're the person who has this job, for me personally, because um, as a young 20-some-year-old who is from here, had traveled, had lived elsewhere, now is back home, you were the first person to say, hey, what you have here, it's not so bad. And, like, you know, you were just enough outside of Evansville and out of my circle at the time to where I was like, oh, okay. And really, like, you know, yeah, we're moving soon, my wife and I, but like that conversation was one of the reasons that like I stuck around and hung out downtown and around the area as much as I did because I realized someone from LA is saying like, it's good here. Like, it, it, you know what I mean? Like as a young 20 year old, it's like I, I started to begin to realize what I was taking for granted, you know, and you, you expounded on it in the conversation like, hey, do you see your friends? Can you do A, B, and C, you know? <laughs> And, so. and those are things that are questions. You know, when you live in a big city, yeah. you know, it, you may go a day without running into someone you know. Mm-hmm. Or you may go longer than a day. You may go a, a week outside of, you know, who you run into, a coworker or something. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, you know, if you're lucky, you have these, you know, relationships with the person who sells you a, a, a coffee. I mean, that becomes a relationship. Sure. And um, 
because people crave that interaction. I also, I, I, to expand a little bit more on the, um, you know, that we don't have it so bad here. <laughs> we really it's, have it's, it. It should good. have been our slogan instead of E is for everyone. <laughs> I've, I've come up with a couple. One is like, <laughs> it, one is Evansville, comma, expect less. Um, <laughs> That's good. I like that one. But they didn't go with that. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Um, <laughs> but I think there's some really powerful things about being in a community this size um, that doesn't have some of the problems that some other communities our size do. You know, as as much um, poverty and lack of opportunities there are here for some people, it, trust me, it's a lot worse in some other communities. Um, the other thing is you can, um, you know, I, when I moved here in 05, there were still phone books and, and people still had phone numbers in it. You have to work a little harder now. But when I got here, if I wanted to meet somebody, I yeah. called them and they answered. Yeah. Yeah. And I was able to talk to people and meet people. And and someone like yourselves, you know, you're if you were in Atlanta, you know, you wouldn't be able to have Jason. You could call the mayor, and you could get on his schedule, yeah. and he could be on your on your podcast, and he would be happy to do it. He's and, been ducking me for years, <laughs> you know. And and <laughs> but yeah, th- this, yeah, this exactly. access we have access here, right? Yeah. And all the great things in the world don't matter if you don't have access to them. Mm-hmm. And it's in some ways even more troubling when you are in those places and you're working hard and all this stuff's going on, and you still don't have access to that good life that you see. You know, you're Clark. I know you're moving to Nashville in case you, anybody wants to stalk him. But right, yeah. you know, <laughs> that I mean, address right. we'll post later. <laughs> yeah, you know, Nashville is great and it's beautiful and all these things are great. But sure. you know, there there are going to be points where you're going to want to do something, and you will have to you will not be able to do it right because you can't get to it. Sure. And and that's going to be like ah, oh. right. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe you know, over in Evansville, we had like the the fourth touring group of, I don't know, some musical and in Nashville, you get like a one week show of like the original Broadway cast. Well, at least here you could go see it. Yeah. At least here it didn't take a week's pay to get a ticket. At least here it doesn't mean leaving, you know, at four in the afternoon to deal with what it takes to get to this place. Yeah. Um, So that, that access and at least here, you know, with just a little bit of work, you can really kind of meet everyone you need to know. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's been – that's one of the most surprising things, just doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, there's – I could. I don't know. I don't know if I could do this anywhere else. But, uh, but yeah, the people are just very willing to – like you'll see everyone just walking like walk down the street. Like I can see the mayor walking down the street. He's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it is, it's just very odd. And, and at the same time, he's somewhere else on someone yeah, else's block got, I have a doing theory. the same thing. He's got a, he's a clone. He's got clones, right? I mean, that's the only way that it makes sense. We have, we have a very hardworking mayor. Um, right. There hasn't been a time that, um, and I, I get it. I have access that some people don't. Yeah. Um, I don't get no's from, from the mayor. I get, you know, a not now or how about this time? Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a dream that he isn't willing to consider for his city. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, a real powerful thing. So, um, at Firefly, there was this (laughs) smothered chicken. Is that a recipe available? Uh, is that the fried chicken with the white gravy? I think so, maybe. Something like that. Sounds about right. Yeah. There was something. And the sweet potato fries. I miss the sweet potato fries so much. But anyways, that's, that's, I'm so sorry. No, you're good. It's, <laughs> so it's, sorry for your. I mean, loss. I'm sure that you feel really bad for me right now. No, no, it was it, my my family and I is one of our favorite places. So we would thank you for even bringing that to us. So. I I um I learned a lot there. I you know does um I was having a discussion last week about you know failure and 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 I didn't do well there. It 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 had um and I know what I did wrong there. I think I know what I did wrong there. Uh, but one of the powerful things I learned there was that a restaurant, um, just like a bar or a coffee house, um, and and it serves as a community within a community. Mm-hmm. And we still have, um, even last year, um, I went to a funeral of a regular guest, and um, 
And we had a, a coworker, one of my employees, who died earlier this year, and it was like, okay, I closed that restaurant seven years ago yeah, this mm-hmm. weekend, but I still tried to find people I knew that worked with him because I felt it was important for me to share a story mm-hmm. as like, as, as it was like someone who was part of your community, and I, you know, I. I told Clark and Clark barely remembered him, but there were some people that were kind of really upset. Uh, yeah. Um, so it, 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 it's like, again, that search for community. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it can be in a restaurant on, you know, on the side of highway 69. It, it, it doesn't really, it, it can happen almost anywhere, mm-hmm. but it's easier when it's in a neighborhood like uh, downtown or in, you know, an urban place sure, where yeah. you're going to, again, see more of those people and have, more of those spots in your daily travels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and as someone who worked there, it became a place, it kind of became your second home as an employee, you know, like you were like, Oh, I get to pick up a shift this weekend. Cool. I'll do that. You know? And it took a minute and, you know, it was my first real restaurant job that I ever had. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's he also met me before I started drinking coffee. So, <laughs> Oh man. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know, you, when you cross a certain threshold with a job, when, when you're, you're wanting to go to it, like that's, that's a great thing. And that's the feeling I got after a while. I know a handful of other people would say the same thing. Um, you know, we would all go out afterwards because we got along on the job and we'd be hanging out at people or wherever. Hammerheads, whatever. Yeah, and yeah, you know, <laughs> I didn't go to Hammerheads. Josh didn't, no, he but okay. he would be at Chironi's. Um, But yeah, like it was one of those things where it, it totally became more of a family aspect, and you know, all of us took on the responsibility of hosting whoever was going to walk in the door that night. And that is something that I'll take with me wherever I go: small coffee shop, recording studio, whatever. If you're in the building, like this is your space now too. And I think two things that I carry with me um, two statements, you know, that I carry out of that restaurant. One, in my interview, I remember asking you, what's it like to manage a restaurant in Evansville? And you were telling me, you know, like when you manage a restaurant, you manage people's lives. You're trying to keep their schedules. You're trying to make sure they're staying out of trouble. You're, they're showing up on time. And even though I've never really been in a management position, that's kind of carried over in terms of how much I respect sticking my schedule, showing up on time or doing my part at my job. And that was a really powerful thing for me to hear. Um, the other thing would be when we went up to tables, there was a rule at Firefly is you never say, I don't know. You can say, I'll find out for you or let me check. Let me do this or that. But like that was one of the biggest things I've ever learned in the service industry was you never say, I don't know. You always just find out or I'm so sorry. And that was, you know, that was another big statement there is like, I'm so sorry, let me find out for you. Or I'm so sorry that didn't come out. You know, um, that goes a long way with people because in the coffee shop, you know, you, you get like anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute and a half with someone. So that time flies by really quick. But in a restaurant, you kind of get to step into someone's dinner table for 45 minutes to maybe three hours. You don't know. Um, so it's your responsibility to host them to the 110% that you can. And so to, you know, go somewhere and then you find out, oh, the host or the server doesn't know something or, you know, they act like they didn't care. Like, you know, that's something I watch for now whenever I'm going out and trying to be understanding with the different people who serve me. Um, But yeah, that's like carried over in so many parts of my life, you know, um, problem solving or relationships. It goes beyond the restaurant, but it definitely started there in the restaurant. So, yeah, fun times. <laughs> <laughs> Just got super deep. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I think that, um, yeah, and we talked briefly about like this concept of that, you know, I serve the city or I serve downtown as an entity. Yeah. And and I, I think that was something that I tried to put into the restaurant was, you know, that I'm there to serve and I'm there to serve the people that work there mm-hmm. and I'm there to serve the people that walk in. And that the like the power of serving others, um, and it's not. And sometimes you know it's it's impossible to do sure. for yourself, and sometimes people don't want that. Um, but it, it's um, 
it's so liberating to take yourself out of the equation mm -hmm. and just focus on that guy coming in for the cup of coffee mm -hmm. or the person coming to you and and you know needing your professional services or yeah, that that you know that moment when you just are removed from the equation except to be the 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 the, the vehicle for that person's needs for a little bit mm -hmm. um yeah yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's seriously like every, every job I've had since then, those concepts have stayed even working at the liberal arts as a student worker at USI. You know, it's I'm like, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean no? no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's a, a cheesecake factory thing is we never said no. And it was drilled into us. It was, oh, I'm mm. so sorry. I'm so sorry. That is the, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I hear people now that are burdened by a limited um, collection of words that they may be able to use or say. And I just sometimes wish that somebody would say, I'm so sorry to me every <laughs> once in a while, you know? Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's so much nicer than telling me no. Mm -hmm. And I and I know what you mean when you say that or, yeah, you know, or uh, maybe, yeah, because that usually means no <laughs> also. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, yeah, there's like, it's that concept. I think I've been thinking about this a lot lately was it's, there are me people and there are we people, you know, where people want to be looking out for the, the greater good for lack of a better phrase, but versus like my own good. And I, I don't know. It seems like I'm running into more of the we people in my life the last couple of years, just being around downtown. I don't know what it is about that area. Like you talked about the urban lifestyle, maybe that attracts that kind of people, but yeah, it seems like less self-focused and more, like, hey, the community, let's, what are we doing? You know, people are spending time pulling weeds at Haney's Corner, and it's like, why are you out here? Why are you out here <laughs> on a Sunday instead of hanging out with, you know, ignoring your children, whatever? Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> I, I, there's definitely something in the water these days in Evansville. Um, there's, there's definitely um, something that's changing and something that's making the community, you know, more attractive to people, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that want to be a part of something, um, you know, there, there's a time even in the most altruistic life that you have to be a me person, you know, that, sure, that, yeah. that comes and, um, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've got obligations and I have things that I sometimes have to do where I'm unable to, to, to be that person that's there, you know, pulling the weeds on a Sunday, yeah. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. but maybe I can, you know, I ran into this, um, uh, a gentleman who lives in the neighborhood and he works downtown and I ran into him at, uh, at Emge's one day and he said, I see you in, in kind of around Southeast first. And I'm like, yeah. And he says, you always have a, a bag in your hand. And I said, yeah, I get, um, I get my groceries in like the plastic bags because then I have a bag that when I'm walking to work that I can use to yeah. pick up stuff. Because right. I'm gonna find <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> stuff, it's, and he's like, really? There's I'm stuff like, everywhere. Yeah, no, they're yeah. just uh, you know, as long as I get a couple things, it's not my job to pick up everything. But right. if I can get a few That's things, funny that you do that because yeah, the guy I, w I walk with a friend of mine every morning, and he will pick up every day. There's something he picks up, and then he start bringing him a bag. It's uh, I mean, I'm not picking it up, but he <laughs> <laughs> well, you're part of the process there. Right, you right. Know? You're encouraging. <laughs> yes. Hey, that was good. You picked that up. Yeah, good job, buddy. Good job. Good job. <laughs> and and the, you know, then of course you know the things you see that people. Yes. Yeah. It's like, like oh, what what? Yeah, I want to know the story. I want to know the story. Oh, and it's like uh, you're you were like you're like three feet from a trash can, and I'm like, man, you were so close. How what what happened here? What, I, uh, where's the disconnect? I, I yeah. sometimes just like find myself <laughs> thinking, oh, it blew out of someone's truck or something, you know that. Sure. <laughs> because otherwise, you know, I don't want to. Because then you're like, people are, wor are the worst. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like, uh, you know, and, and who hasn't, whether intentionally or accidentally, thrown something away in the wrong spot? Sure. Oh, yeah. And, and so I just. Uh, yeah. Well, except for that one. What is what was his name on the on the cup you found on the street? Like, Corey. 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 Come on, Corey. <laughs> Corey. What are you doing? That was my biggest social media win <laughs> ever. That's awesome. I think that that had 17,000. The reach was like 17,000. Oh, um, my gosh. And, and, and the comments and like three dozen 
four dozen, five dozen shares like in the first two hours. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's great. So for you at home that don't know, I, I with the Downtown Alliance, I have a, a Facebook page that, and, and I found this cup and it was a Starbucks cup and it said Corey on it and it had his order and I just took a picture of it and I think I made some snarky comment about Corey not throwing something out. <laughs> right. <and> just boom. <laughs> now it's Corey with an E because I know a Corey that listens. And he doesn't have an E in his name. I want to make sure he knows we're not talking about him. And someone pointed out that Corey could also be a female Corey. Could be a female. So that's absolutely true. So it just I just started repeating Corey, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> come on, Corey. Come and, on, Corey. And let's be honest, it was a dude. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I, this he was drinking a white chocolate frappe something, if it's a dude. Maybe. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Um yeah, maybe. It was ordered at seven thirty or something. I mean, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is an intriguing drink to have that late <laughs> that is, in the day. That's and, true, yeah. You know, but there wasn't caffeine in it. I don't. I mean, I don't know what he's doing here or she. <laughs> yeah, so everything about things, it was a story. Uh, we should start making up stories for all the trash we we were finding, it and just put it. in. You know, it's like, oh, today it's we, a whole new podcast. It is. We're, we'll work on that. Right? Yeah, that's, you've got yeah. the pizza podcast. You got yeah. like Evansville trash, and everyone thinks, oh, you're going to talk about somebody that did something really stupid trash. and said. No, it's just trashing Evansville. Trashing Evansville. That's that your name right there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get. That's probably way more popular than my podcast. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll we'll workshop that. Um, so one thing too that I know you like you did you break you broke your elbow or something you dislocated it shattered it yeah I um, about two years ago I had a a, a really horrible accident on the greenway um underneath franklin street um on that bridge it was a you know it's blind curve there yeah. and um i basically um as i hit the ground i started sort of almost delaminating my arm as i was moving along um mm. and then broke all three bones that come into the elbow joint and they all three were ejected through the skin um oh my gosh and was um, a couple of other things, too. Um, I was lucky to be wearing a helmet. I actually yeah. left the house that day without a helmet. And then as I started riding, there was no wind, and I wanted to um, get a, a personal record that day, which I did, world's most expensive bike ride. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I, So I went back and I put my helmet on, and my helmet hit the ground and, and, and shattered. Um, wow. So... Yeah, I went to Deaconess, uh, and then I was in Deaconess uh, about an hour and a half, and they um, put me in a helicopter and sent me to Indianapolis, uh, where the next day, uh, my first surgery was nine and a half hours, and um, and then I had a follow-up surgery wow. um, about 14 months after that, because I just would, was not uh, healing correctly, <laughs> um, which was another seven and a half hours. Uh, so it, it, you know, they told me that it was a life changing injury. Like, yeah. and I was thinking that I was going to lose my arm, but when they were, mm. when they were putting me into the helicopter, like the physicians at Deaconess, um, well, let, let me, let me step back. I'm not all altruistic because that's, I'm lying there <laughs> bleeding on the thing. And I, call um my partner who couldn't come or didn't answer and then i called a neighbor my neighbor came and then my partner showed up and i'm just have my phone and i'm like linda white's um cell is in there can somebody <laughs> call her she's the ceo of deacon yeah. i'm like because i want vip I like want when i get stuff. to the hospital. i want the good stuff right here <laughs> and they're like calling her and she's not answering i'm like okay and tornada i'm like running through all the deaconess executives i know like and i Great. i get to deaconess and and it was a spectacular experience and thankfully they said we can't treat you here we can't there's no one in evansville that can do this yeah um hmm. and they sent me up there and I thought, you know, this it's going to be a life-changing accident. Uh, and so I was thinking I was going to lose my, the use of my arm over that. Yeah. Uh, when I landed, I was unable to um, uh, spread my fingers. Um, and so there was, you know, some fear of some nerve things. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, through trusting people sent to help me, trusting those sent to serve me, Doing what they said, 
you know, the, the 60 sessions of occupational therapy um, and, and working through all that stuff, the outcome is I have almost all my range of motion. I'm seldom in pain. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it really has been, um, it has taught me, you know, to, to trust these people mm -hmm. um, that uh, before I would have been like, yeah, well, I don't know what it was. You know, I hit the ground and I knew exactly what to do. I, 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 I hit the ground and I instantly prayed for protection from further injury and I prayed to trust the people that were coming to help me. And the guy that I almost hit that set off the accident, it wasn't me, it was his fault, um, like instantly was like the first person who, I mean, he was so great to me. And then... Hmm. Um, you know, I was in a place where any, any, you know, there were yeah. cyclists out. I mean, nobody oh, sure. could have seen me. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, how do we, you know, and he was there, like, you know, getting people to stop. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I'm just very blessed that, that it was that guy. Cause it, I mean, hmm. I mean, God forbid I would have hit another person. I was going 24 miles an hour hmm. uh, when I, Judging from the that last segment on my um, app that was monitoring my ride, mm -hmm. like how stupid was I going twenty four miles an hour into a blind curve? Oh, wow. um, but it felt great. Oh my god, <laughs> that last second, I was like, "This is awesome." <laughs> um, but the, the, the you know to come out the other side like really really okay. Mm -hmm. um, I I um, thankfully had you know. Insurance wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I can't imagine how people who are not um, a insured or B have um, the ability to read their insurance contracts and things and understand how all this works. Yeah. Like, you know, it it, it is. Um, you know, it is. It is shocking sometimes to open your mail and even though i knew i wasn't at the end of it mm -hmm. you know it was just sometimes like god i'm in pain all day and then i get home and there's a bill for one hundred ninety five thousand right. dollars, and then there's another bill that comes the next day for another forty five thousand. and and understanding how all these things have to work through a system and how everything takes time and how i'm not in control of that time mm -hmm. yeah um, another powerful life, life lesson for me there was, you know, that, you know, it's everything's going to work on its own schedule, not mine. Wow. I think um, I remember that week, that first week that it happened, I, you know, cause we're all neighbors. We all live within a block and a half of each other. And, uh, you were walking by where I live and I want to say it was your sister or somebody walking with you. Yeah. And you, I, I want to say you were heavily medicated because you were like laughing and telling me that you got in this accident. I just remember her just being like, come on, just keep walking. <laughs> she was pulling you to keep walking. <laughs> yeah, my sister flew out from the, um, she was living in Scottsdale at the time and came out mm. um, to uh, to stay with me for about a week. Uh, yeah, I remember that walk. It was hotter than heck that day. And I'm like, I have got to get out. It was like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I was I, I I was pretty medicated the first couple of weeks and because I was in yeah, a lot, a lot of pain, constant pain, pain. Constant pain. Um, yeah. and and I can also easily see how how addictive those um, that medication mm -hmm. is. You mm -hmm. know, it's just you know yeah. I'm I'm glad that for me the pain was resolved um, through healing, and I'm also glad that I. Y as someone who has an addictive personality, I realized that, you know, I needed to put limits on what I was taking. I needed accountability with my physician. Mm -hmm. I needed accountability with the orthopedist. I needed accountability with another person about all that stuff because, uh, gosh, looking back two years later, I still remember that first shot of propofol when they were moving me like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <this> <laughs> I, I, I you see know, what the problem is. Well, oh my God. Oh, Michael Jackson did not die yeah. sad. I know yeah. that. Oh, oh, sorry. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> do you, so go are, ahead. Do you go back on, are you back bike riding? I have ridden a few times yeah. uh, in the last couple months, and I'm uh, considering what my next bicycle purchase will be. 
Um, Cause I don't know if I get back on a podcast yeah. at that point. I think I kind of had to. And yeah. I also, um, from a, a physical point of view, it's really the only exercise that I ever truly love doing. Hmm. You know, that, yeah. that it, I just really love everything That's, about it. Okay. Yeah. Cause running sucks. Let's be honest. <laughs> Those people that run, I don't know. I do not. I, yeah, I was like, there's no happy runners. And like, if they're smiling, they're delusional at that point. The pain has gotten too far. So, yeah, that's my theory. Yeah. So, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I mean, I could talk about. I mean, you'll be back. We'll just say if you're if you're willing. Well, I, I, yeah, and and we have a little. You know, yeah. if you want to. Well, the one thing I did want to ask about, if that's okay, yeah. is the when you mentioned earlier the downtown master plan, um, and. I don't know if I hear much about it. I know there's things going on, so I was wondering, like, what since the announcement, has there been any progress on things sure. actually being done? Mm-hmm. So the uh, the the plan put forward four transformational ideas and one overarching theme, and I'll I'll run through those ideas real quick. Sure. Um, the four ideas were vibrancy on Main Street. And in the in the time since the plan was released in April of last year, uh, we've seen seven restaurants open. Mm-hmm. There's five under construction today. Today, um, five retailers open. Four hundred and fourteen units of housing, and wow. that that is either done or in yeah. in some point where I would. You know, there's some theoretical housing, I'll call it, but that's in some point where we're really moving forward with that. Right. Um, so the the biggest component of that is reactivating that park, mm-hmm. um, which is owned by a private family, uh, and, and and that's the one next to 420 Main. Is yeah, that I'm about? yeah. Okay. So um, and that was a great gift to that family. I don't think yeah. they really understood the the Kempf's, um the burden that that would be to maintain mm. that. Mm. Uh, we have found a um, industrial user that needs to do a park swap. They need to put a piece of equipment underneath an existing park. And in order to do that, they have to replace that parkland. Hmm. So we believe that we will have an announcement in the next couple months about who's acquiring that park. And that entity will then gift it to the city. Hmm. So the city will end up with the land. Um, and some improvements underneath it because there's a lot of issues with the park, um, hmm. uh, geological issues underneath there. Well, geological sounds. Uh, We're striking oil is basically. <laughs> well, no, I mean there there was a fire there, and as opposed to removing the basement right. correctly, they mm. pushed the rubble into the into the basement and covered it with soil. So huh. there's some issues that have to be addressed yeah. there that are not going to be inexpensive to to resolve. But we believe we have a plan moving forward cool. that. The next area that we wanted to focus on was public improvements, public space improvements, and how bringing some um, improvements, i.e. the linear park that was indicated in there, Mm -hmm. would bring development along. And you will see in the next few weeks, I would imagine by the end of October at the latest, an announcement for a large development coming into downtown that you will be able to pull the master plan out and say that looks exactly like what they showed. Hmm. Okay. So, um, you know, these, these some of these um, pieces, they have to kind of happen in darkness, you know. Sure, yeah. it, it's and, – and trust me, sometimes you don't want to see how the sausage gets made. You know, it is <laughs> – No, I've heard that actually. It, it, yeah, it, it, a lot of times some it, people don't necessarily like how things get done and – in local government. It, it, and it is unpleasant, but hopefully, yeah. you know, when the outcome comes out that right. it's okay. But so we're going to see um, that we also will have some announcements on some trail enhancements, some sidewalk stuff um, coming. So, so yeah. that's moving along. Cool. The uh, no co uh, makers district. Um, we have a developer who is working on a mixed use um, project that on the ground floor will have a uh, clean manufacturing facility, second floor offices for this engineering firm, mm-hmm. and the third floor will have a couple units of housing um, cool. f- that will fill in, uh, that will replace almost a missing tooth over there. We're also seeing some, um, hmm. a lot of in- interest um, now 
whether they're able to get to the close or not, I, I, I can't really speak to, but um, on, on several of the historic buildings over there. So the Pearl Laundry Building, yeah. the Carpenter House, um, Geiger Moving and Storage. And I believe Geiger is closed or is about to close and will be converted to residential housing. So we've got that. The other area that we um, spoke about was uh, riverfront enhancements. And we made a decision not to address that during um, the casino's construction Correct. because we would yeah. the first thing we needed was data and there was no way to get clean real accurate car counts when one lane is closed right mm-hmm. so we just set that aside the biggest thing i've been working on for the last um 10 months or so is this overarching organization and that is called an economic improvement district in the state of indiana is the the term that's used here mm-hmm. and we are in the midst of a um of a petition process that what that is, is that the property owners in an, in an area can raise their hand and say, I want to pay more for benefits beyond what the city can provide. Mm-hmm. And in the state of Indiana, it requires greater than 50% of the property owners who, who represent greater than 50% of the property value can raise their hand and say, we want to pay this. And when that happens, um, and we are rapidly moving towards the thresholds we need for that, um, a district is formed, and all the property owners in that district then on their tax bill Mm -hmm. twice a year receive a charge um, for these funds that don't go to the city or the county, but instead go directly to a board managed by their fellow property owners. So... Our um, downtown district will really, it just focuses really on the commercial part of downtown, doesn't move into the residential areas. Um, There's a few homes. There's uh, 432 parcels. Um, 11 of them are single family homes. And out of those 11, five of them have businesses in them. So Mm. this is a a tool for commercial development, really. Right. Mm. This will generate between $600,000 and $650,000 a year for the benefit of those property owners in terms of you know, branding, a, you know, mm-hmm. website, business recruitment. So there's a, there's a restaurant brand I want to get in Evansville. And it, when I went to meet with them, you know, I had to call someone and say, Hey, can you, you know, I need, I know you've been supporting me. I need another thousand dollars to go, uh, you know, yeah. for an airline ticket and a hotel night, you know, it's right. it just, it gives us that tool to where we can go after those businesses more effectively. Um, the biggest thing that a, a resident, whether you live in the district or not, will see is increased beautification and safety mm-hmm. in that district. So when you go to um, Cincinnati, all of the activities that you see in downtown Cincinnati or over the Rhine are managed through one of these kinds of organizations. So the the ambassadors that tell you where, you know, this way to the stadium, that way to the restaurants, right. the um, the people out picking up all the trash, keeping it clean, the hanging baskets of flowers, the the landscape that's seasonally appropriate, all of that is paid for in through this mechanism in in other communities. We have uh, four of them in Indiana right now. Uh, downtown Indianapolis is working through their petition process. They're a little bit behind where we are mm-hmm. timeline wise, working with the same consultants. Um, to, to, to get there. We've had one in downtown Fort Wayne uh, for over 20 years, and it's, hmm. it, it's been really clearly evidenced in, across the country that these work. Right. Um, they renew every, in Indiana, they renew every 10 years, um, again, through a petition process. Mm-hmm. Um, and about 99% of them across the country are renewed because the the property owners find that it really serves their hmm. needs, so that's the biggie. Okay. Um, it, it's it, it, it's going to be transformational in a different way than building a big building. It's mm. going to be that kind of you know on the street, you know what does it look like? How do the parking garages look? All those things that people hmm. interact with, in yeah, went on their way to the big building that is done in a different way. Hmm. Okay. Um, we also will see a, a, an announcement in the next couple of weeks on another major building in the medical campus. Again, uh, roughly 100,000 square feet. Um, so the same size, 
uh, as the current one that's under right. construction. And again, the, uh, over there by the Greyhound terminal, you'll see another uh, major announcement hmm. on uh, a $40 million project there. So um, there's a, l- a lot of developer interest in downtown Evansville. Mm-hmm. Um, we're seeing, um, we're, we're cognizant that there needs to be a place for um, folks who aren't rich to live as well. Um, not everyone can or wants to spend a thousand dollars for a one bedroom. Right. So how do we, you know, get the seven hundred dollar sure, one yeah. bedrooms and the six hundred dollar dollar one bedrooms? It's a very tricky place with the with the values and and the cost of construction in a place like that to put, you know, truly low income housing in. But uh, workforce housing, you know, where that school teacher right out of college, first job, they're making, you know, thirty seven five a year, mm-hmm. could say, oh, I can get a studio down there, whereas now they can't. Mm, right. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of out of the master Man. plan. That's a lot of things. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things going on. Do you have any more? Anything? Uh, we pretty much covered, yeah, a lot of stuff on here. So, okay. Yeah. Just make sure, you know, it's the last time you're ever on a podcast. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's been great having, like, Clark as a thread through my life. I'll wrap up with this. I, I You know, we had lost... Um, contact with each other and I go into the Starbucks on First Avenue. Do you remember this? And I see this guy I know in line and I'm like, hey, Clark, <laughs> thinking I was saying hi to Clark Absher. And this guy turns around and it's like, and, and, <laughs> like wait, Clark, yeah. meet Clark, meet Clark. Yeah, uh, yeah it was, uh, I, I remember that day. Um, uh, it's been a pleasure knowing you and pleasure seeing, you know, what you're doing with your life and, uh, and, and the, the positive outcomes of faith in your life over a long period of time in a way that isn't preachy, mm-hmm. um, I think is, is been a really wonderful thing to see. And I know that you've um, created a, a lot of uh, joy and, and, and positive outcome outcomes in other people's lives from how you've chosen to live yours. So thank you. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying it and thank you for, you know, thank you for the great experience at Firefly. Like that really taught a lot of lessons and calmed down <laughs> a lot of hairy situations. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been it's been amazing to to see what you're doing now, to see how I got to know you, like serving, plating up food next to you, <laughs> night after night, and the detail that went into all the recipes, all the format, and in terms of getting hot food out and yeah then, i used to like hand plates to people no put it down like this yeah like <laughs> that the first bite had to be at seven o'clock yeah and because yeah. that's where it needs to go that's where your fork goes automatically yeah and and so like seeing all those things translate yeah. that into you know what you're doing now in downtown evansville it's like okay like this makes sense like you know it's the same thing but a much bigger project obviously yeah um but it's been very awesome to see that and you know i can't say enough you know how kind you have been to me and how uh, that time at Firefly was, you know, in the middle of very difficult times in my life. But at the same time, it was an anchor and it was a home to go to when home maybe wasn't an option. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. No, it's long overdue. I'm glad you... Yeah, I was thinking about that too. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> well, now you're in the group, so now you've been right. on all the time. So all right. People will be tired of hearing you talk. Great. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it.